This conference will now be recorded.
participants in the meeting. Do we have Louie? Does anybody see whether we have Lee? Uh, he, he's joining now. Sorry. I think we're to need. Great. Well, and Evelyn may have stepped away, but she will be right back, I guess. Yeah. So. I think we can go ahead. I will call the meeting to order. Um, Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Uh, Commissioner Boyd? She's here. She just, she stepped, just stepped away. Stepped away. Commissioner Gaston? Is he here? No? Lee? All right. So he, Lee is not here. Commissioner Gupta? Here. Commissioner Clark? Here. Commissioner Pecora? Here. Commissioner Swamberg? Here. And Commissioner Mateo should be here. It's just um, Commissioner Gaston. Lena, yeah, yeah, I'm on. Oh, okay. All right. Can you you were following the rule, I think. All right. I'm on. Yeah. Welcome Everybody. back. Welcome, Thank you all for being here. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the agenda? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any additions or deletions or corrections or? If not, I, I would. Um, I have a correction. Um, towards the end, the meeting that I put in there was. Oh, it's actually right, November tenth. Which is today. Did I? Yeah, I did it. I thought I I then um, changed that. I did. We're good. So if it's okay, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. I second. second. Any opposed? All those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. None opposed. And has everyone had an opportunity to review the October 2020 minutes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any additions or corrections? Just one slight correction. Uh, yeah, Ruby, Ruby got the right, the right section to correct, but she made the wrong correction. The date is right, but today is a special meeting. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, it's a regular special meeting will be next week on the 18th. And I guess I have a question about, it says that we approved the regular meeting minutes of September 10th, and I think that should have been September 8th. Was that 8th? That's correct. Is it eight? Yes. The second Tuesday was the eighth, so I guess we should change that. Any other changes? Would anybody move their approval, please? So moved. I second. Who was that? I'm sorry. Uh, Ethelene Boy. And who moved? Lee. Was it Lee? Thanks. 
can't leave. You gotta get in those many motions and <laughs> yeah. the last meeting. Yeah, what can I say? <laughs> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand one way or another. I'll say aye. I'll say aye. Any opposed? If not, the minutes stand approved as corrected. Latrice, we are ready for your report. Thanks. So we didn't have any um, rice and stew butters issues last month, and we didn't have any cases that settled in mediation. I attended the um, monthly trauma-informed consortium meeting, um, and they have Iowa has a new ACEs report um, that kind of uh, zeroes in more. So on the different kinds of trauma, it's not as limited. And then it also talks about resilience. And they have it available for it to be ordered um, into books to share with your local jurisdiction. So I ordered uh, some of them. And I'm going to be sending them out to the mayor and council. But I ordered enough for each one of you. If you want a paper copy, uh, and we can mail it to you. So you don't have to come up to the office to pick it up. Um, or you can get it online, and I'm going to share a link to it now in the in the uh, chat box. But um, it kind of goes in line with the conversation that we've been um, we've been having about the um, policing initiative and kind of doing more focus on or having more focus on um, harm reduction efforts uh, kind of looking at what changes we need to make in our policies for families within our community to thrive um, and then it goes along with some of the outreach initiatives that we're working on for this upcoming year and the importance of having conversations about differences within our community kind of bridging that gap kind of taking the stigma away from having those um, uncomfortable conversations um, so I think that would be a really uh, good thing for council to review as they are um, gearing up to have those discussions um, with the commission about the uh, profiling or the sorry the the, the initiative relating to the uh, recommendations uh, for concerns with policing. Um, Yeah, so the first link is just the the landing web page. The second one is the executive summary, which gives like I think it's two pages. It just kind of explains the updates to the report. The third link is the full report. Uh, the fourth link is a video that they did to explain the launch of this new program that they had. So they've gotten some funding to work on um, kind of creating systemic change throughout the state and um, working on advocacy and collaboration work. And um, one of the things that stood out was that um, our area, we're in Region 6, like we have the highest um, ACEs rate in the state. Um, so that was interesting. Um, and I think, it, I think it would help us locally to kind of think about um, how trauma affects um, the people within our community and how we can alter the way that we are interacting with people to have better outcomes for our community members. Um, and we had a bunch of public hearing last week, which uh, was the 27th, or the week before last, sorry, October 27th. Um, and the post hearing group from the office is due. Um, at the end of this week, and then the respondents' brief is going to be due three weeks, two to three weeks after that. Um, the hearing officer uh, indicated that she expected to have a decision within about a month of receiving the respondents' uh, post hearing brief. And the commission has to rule on the proposed decision within 30 days of its issuance, uh, or else it'll become a finalized decision. So um, just be aware when we receive that proposed decision, it'll go out to you all immediately and then we have to schedule probably a special meeting to have a discussion on that. Um, and you all have that discussion and those questions to go over. Um, and after we 
we receive the, uh, I don't know, I guess that could be your preference. Do we want to, um, after we receive the respondent post hearing briefs, do you want us to send out the file to you then, or do you want to wait until we get the proposed decision from the hearing officer? Um, I think for me, I would like
we would like to have him as a witness in the case. So um, we're going to see if they're opposed to, to rescheduling it until after he's released, which is February. Um, if they if they are opposed to it, we might still submit a motion to continue due to, due to um, him not being available to testify. Um, but we're going to see what their position is on that. Um, we had a, uh, another public hearing scheduled for next week. Um, but so we had that one rescheduled until the end of January because we had two public hearings in, in one week. Um, so we pushed that one back. Um, it is, yeah. um, we met to, uh, I, I met with Commissioner Buster and Commissioner Boyd just to go over um, the administrative rules, kind of what they were, um, and because we're a little swamped with all of the public hearings and mitigation stuff, I asked if we could, you know, plan to uh, have a meeting probably in, in December um, to, to kind of discuss that, but, um, but we went over kind of the purpose of administrative rules and how that works, um, and some of the things that we talked about um, were um, it's like adding a conflict of interest um, provision in there. Um, Cedar Rapids has one that seems to be a good model for that uh, kind of expounding on the, the council rules for conflict. Uh, and that could kind of go under like a, a, the rules of practice. So, um, kind of explaining what the roles of the, the officers are. Uh, um, yeah, so that was kind of where, where we are with that. So um, I'll have a, a meeting with Ruby, uh, Michael, and uh, Boy to go over those. And probably next month when we get that updated. And then, we submitted our um, HUD contract documents. One of the things that I think we might do, and I think we might maybe talk about mm -hmm. um, is purchase the race, the power of an illusion. Um, the, that's the video that we watched last month. Um, and I think it would be good to um, do like community conversations about it. So um, they have the Othering and Belonging Institute uh, from uh, UC Berkeley, they have, they've like worked with the um, producer of that film and they created an updated website and they have a lot of material on there to have to facilitate community conversations about it and kind of panel discussion. So that might be a, um, a thing that we can work with library on um, with that as well. I reached out to Amy on it and she uh, talking to her staff about whether, how we could, you know, work together on an initiative for that one. And um, new things. So we had a billing issue. We had um, the commission hired um, attorney Mike Malloy back in 2018, and um, he submitted his billing statement. He had three billing statements. The first two were paid. The last one, uh, the finance director refused to pay him. Um, taking the position that the commission is not allowed to hire an attorney, um, and so they weren't going to pay his last bill. Um, and, and in addition to that, not um, you know being a thing that the commission can't hire an attorney, um, it, it doesn't make sense to him until they pay the first two bills. So if that was the position that they wanted to take, yeah, it didn't make sense the first bill, but that's the final one. So um, I'm going to be, he's, he's asking for payment, and I'm going to be resubmitting his, his statement again. And then I guess we'll see what, what finance does this, this go round. Um, and I'm not sure if he's going to um, seek collection activity on that or, or um, what's going to ask him to go for that. But it, it was what's, submitted. What's, what's what, what did uh, Malloy uh, 
Uh, how, what was he doing? How was he representing uh, the commission uh, for this bill? Um, this was various things uh, going on. So there was the dispute with the um, changing the ordinance and whether or not that was legal. Um, and the removal of the four commissioners. Uh, he was reviewing the, the letter that notified them of that. Um, the uh, repeated um, um, interference with commission activity. At least the portion of that work was involved in the attempt to prevent uh, the appointments of Mayor Flitch from operating as commissioners. I think we know how that turned out legally. I would be very much opposed to seeing the taxpayers have to vote the cost of that existence. Did uh, he, uh, did uh, Malloy file any case in court related to the uh, mission? I, I don't think so. Who represented the former four former uh, individuals uh, who were on this commission and are uh, in the case they brought to the to the court? Uh, both there were two cases, as I recall. One uh, uh, that was sort of a temporary thing, and then the, the other one that uh, where uh, they. Were the court was asked to resolve membership. Was he involved in either of these two cases? Not, not that I know of. Who was the attorney for them? I don't. I don't think they had an attorney. Well, then how did they file all of those? Well, who was? I find that hard to believe. But they went to the court on their own without any representation. And we have well, those the two. file. And, and you're, you're talking about this year, right? So this is this is this, the statement from 2018, I think, 2018, 2019. For actions taken before the removal of the four commissioners. I, I, I slightly remember that um, there was a point where that Mr. Malloy was representing the former commissioners um, and not the whole commission as a whole. <laughs> So the, that's it for the director's report. Thank you, Latrice. Um, is there any new business? Nothing on the agenda, certainly. It's new business. Um, old business. Uh, is there a further report of the bylaw commission committee's report, the, the rules committee? Sounds like you have, some of you have met and you'll be meeting again. Is there more to say about it, anybody? I don't think so. That's, that's kind of all we did um, thus far. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, the next matter is the commission email format. This has been on the agenda several times. It fell off somehow last month. Um, 
as it has, has been made clear, uh, at least one commissioner would like to use the city provided email. She did not, you know, it wasn't forced upon her, as my understanding is. Uh, she requested it of the city. Um, and so uh, what I think this has to do with is commissioners uh, receiving official email for, uh, about the commission work at the email address of their choosing. So um, that is the proposal. Any discussion? Why is this the issue? Well, I, I, I think that we have to use the city uh, uh, email, email, no. or could we use our own? Are you, what, what's, what? As, I, as I said, the, the proposal is the proposal is for individual commissioners to use the email of their choosing to receive okay. and deal with commission business. And I, so that's I, the proposal, I, and that's what. Uh, I think the issue was that there needs to be some sort of uh, rules or process set up so that if they get emailed, something is outlined as to how that's going to be handled because if they are contacted about um, commission uh, cases, they have a, a process for how that's going to be handled because when you're using the public email, we have no grounds to not disseminate that email. So that is public information and it is handled as such. Um, and no other board or commission uses city emails. Everybody uses their personal emails. So if people wanted to create a separate email to handle commission emails because the departmental emails were going to be discoverable in some uh, magical way, all of their emails, um, then they could have, like establish their own personal email just to use for the, the uh, commission email. So when you're using the public email, if somebody contacts us and asks for the commissioner's email, then we can give out we would give out the public email because we don't have any grounds to not. Well and I guess it would be handled in the same way that uh, as we have discussed before, you know, when someone comes up to you in the grocery store, you Lightly tell someone that you uh, are not able to discuss commission business uh, that is not, you know, before the commission or to handle it on an ex parte basis. And so I would think that um, certainly a reply could be put on the city email if that's what someone wants to use that says, um, you know, I, I'm not expecting an email from any uh, persons with cases before the commission and and will not respond to them. So I, I don't know it, that it needs to be more complicated than that, and that can certainly be a part of the motion, if there is one. Is it part of the motion that we set up uh, our own per, uh, personal separate email addresses exclusively for? No. 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 It, I, I think the idea is, um, it, and if there is a motion, and of course I can't make a motion, but I think the idea would be that commissioners, once again, I'll say it for the third time, commissioners would be allowed to use whatever email um, address they choose for their commission business and to use the city provided email um, since that is an address that follows the convention of the other the other city uh, employ the city employees that they may need to have a, a reply, an automatic, or at the end of every email that says, you know, I I can't accept emails from persons with matters before the commission. Are the city related emails in operation now? Like, to, uh, do I have uh, my home email? In addition, I have an email from the city as an operation? No, I don't think so. I think, go, go ahead, Ruby. Um, I, I don't believe anybody else uses the um, city email but me. Uh, I have one that I use sometimes, Ruby. Oh, oh, um, 
so Janelle too. Um, and that was, again, way back in 2000, I don't know, 18, I believe, is when I asked for it um, separately. And there, so it wouldn't have been set up unless I asked for it personally, right? Correct. The, the gist of this is that we, we would get to choose what email we use. Yeah, that's the motion. And that if you use the city email, then we'll just put that disclaimer in the bottom. So I would need someone to, like I said, I would need someone to make that motion if that's what we're going to consider. So move. What, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the motion, first of all. Uh, so if somebody can explain that to me, kind of help me out, because I, I wanted to say something before the motion is made, but uh, uh, when we get to the question part or whatever, I guess I can get somebody to explain it. But, uh, I don't think it's been made. I think three people said something at once. So the motion is commissioners are allowed to use whatever email they want to use um, with regards to commission business. And if they're using a city um, city email, then we just have to put that disclaimer, um, like what Janelle said. So Ruby, has, is that, Ruby, are you making that motion? Yes. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Ethelene. Any discussion? Mike, did you want to? Well, uh, well, one thing about you know having a city email, and I have a particular concern with the fact that. We are the only uh, the only commission that is assigned to be there or have that option. And and I just got to tell you guys that I uh, that, that that's a reason for that. And the reason in the back of my mind that uh, that bothers me is that. The city wants to be involved in every detail and, and action that we are doing, uh, even prior to being notified. And, and I just don't like that. I mean, if one if one commission needs to have an email that the city uh, provides, then all of them need to have it. And, and I can tell you. Uh, Guys, I, I, I feel in a bad way about some of the mess that's happening in this community and around this country right now. And for somebody to, uh, for, 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 for there not to be a policy from the city on this thing for all of the commission and just this commission, that bothers me. And it bothers me to the core that because we are on such uh, uh, very uh, uh, matters that are that are very very sensitive to the community, you know, that that just bothers me, guys, and I have a problem with it. You know, and I'll just say that and I'll be quiet. And I, and I don't like it. And I don't mind standing up and telling anybody. That. So, Mike, what you're saying, if I understand you correctly, so please correct me I'm wrong. What you're saying is that you approve that that you support the motion that that we use what that we as individuals choose whichever email we address we we wish to have, whatever email service we wish to have. Is that what the thing about it? The thing about it, I, I really just believe we ought to use our personal emails unless the city's going to direct that everybody else and every other convention use their email. I mean, use the city email. I mean, that, that's just my feeling. I mean, that's an option. I know that probably some disagree with the fact that uh, nobody 
himself is asked to provide or uh, nobody, no other commission is given the opportunity to have a uh, email. That that's the thing that bothers me. Why is such there? Uh, why is the different variance and uh, procedure for this commission versus the other commission? Um, so let me give you just a background of let me be very clear. What I need you to talk to is my, my, my issue is with everybody, every commission, not having the same process or procedure. That's what I have a problem with. Right. So I, I understand that. Let me just give you a background of what the status of the commission was at the time that I was appointed. Um, there was a big legal battle, as everybody knows. And at that point, I didn't want any communication regarding the commission going through my personal email. And so I wasn't alone in that. There were several, several of us who did that. Um, and, you know, they're no longer in the commission anymore. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't forced upon me. We, you know, me and the other individuals requested it individually um, and the others who would rather you know just use their own email continue to use their own email um, and it, with your point about you know the other commissions having a different uh, i guess you know a different opportunity with regard to the email um i would just say that you know at that point I think the Civil Rights Commission has a different, um, you know, we had a big cloud over our head at that point. So yes, it was certainly different from the other commission, um, you know, back then, and I would say still right now. Yeah, you finished? Yeah. Okay, let me just say my, my premise what I just said still stands. That commission is gone. I, you know, I'm, I'm not in the habit of living in the past. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if I want to live in the past, I can live in the 1960s and, and, and have all this hell and stuff in me from uh, racial in, in, in inequality and stuff and still have that same frame of format and where I'm in today. And so, uh, I want to look at where we are at today, and I look at how this commission is treated and how we should be establishing a relationship with the city and how we want to move forward and our collaboration with them, whether it's email, whether it's uh, establishing uh, relationships that have been broken or whatever. And so I still stand on the premise that uh, if this commission is given that option or if uh, there is a requirement of policy that we should have one, then all the commissions should have that. I have confidence in every commissioner that's here, that's serving, uh, that we, I know that we are respectful one to another. And, and so let me just tell you, I don't do uh, 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 other individuals has been what I would say aggressive in nature other than trying to present their views. And so I, I can't live with what the, the old commissioners did. I want to live with what we're doing now. Thank you. I've, I've had that email since I was appointed. So, and I, I, I'm not sure if Lee has it, but no. They was issued one at the time, but the because of that litigation that was going on, the comment was made. I don't remember by who that if you didn't want your personal email being subject to discovery related to to the commission matters, I used it a couple of times and I found it not efficient for my own purposes. So in the last year, year and a half at least, I've been using a personal email that I keep for 
my personal business. Um, you know, and to me, the motion is not to require anybody to use city email. It's just to simply to give the commissioner who would prefer to use a city email the option to do so. And um, I'm not doing it myself. If Ruby chooses to do it, I'm comfortable with that. So I'll support the mission for the, the motion as it's currently worded. When uh, I first joined the commission, they gave me, uh, they encouraged me to get a, uh, a, a city email, uh, and I did. And now, for the last several months, I haven't been able to ask them. So, I, for all I know, there could be email out there. But if I can't open it, can't get to be, I'm using my personal one. And I can continue using my personal one. Until, yeah, the reason that I'm in. Any further discussion? If not, uh, Ruby has made the motion. It was seconded, I believe, by Ethelene. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, it sounds as if the motion has passed. I believe, Henry, we are to the review of the revised policing reforms proposal. Okay, I uh, sent to you. Uh, you the um, revised revised proposal. Uh, you know, has the ability to get them on uh, on, on the screen. Uh, but uh, if not, let me just proceed. First of all, okay. Uh, there, there they are. Okay, we can we can. We can skip to, uh, you know, we skip by you know, table of contents, go by that. The recommendations for a responsive system of uh, filing of complaints. Uh, we didn't have any changes in that as for our last meeting. Uh, uh, the uh, recommendations, for recommendations for the allocation of uh, uh, reallocation of police and city funding. We didn't have any. Changes to that according to the last meeting. So then we get to uh, uh, page three. Which is, uh, okay, which is the recommendation for for continuing the school resource office. Now I have underlined where there has been. Uh, uh, revision and basically the revision here is that's what we discussed it. Uh, it was stated that the, we should include in the targeted minority in communities children with disabilities. So you'll see in the second paragraph there's a sentence that reads among those who claim that studies uh, have shown that it actually contributes to school to prison. Uh, for minority children, for children, for that children of color, and children with disabilities are unfairly disappointed by school resource officers, and that these officers, uh, uh, that uh, these officers do not give black children and children with disabilities the benefit of the doubt, and then down in the last, the way the black foundation also. And students with disabilities was added. That's the only change that was made to that. Uh, so we can do, I guess, one of three things. I want to make the change they take it out, open as is, put the change, or if there, if anyone, if 
there are more recommendations that now people feel need to be added to this. Okay, I'm going to send this back once again for revision. So uh, I move that we accept the uh, the recommendation concerning school resource officers as provides. I second the motion. Danielle, you want to call the vote? Uh, any further discussion? This is, is this just for the uh, school resource officers? Yeah, this is just the school resource This is we're doing it revision by revision, each recommendation by, by revision. So we're only voting now this recommendation by school resource officers. If uh, there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. All right. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Robin Clark, did you? Who, who did the motion? Sorry. I did the motion. You did. Okay. And then, all right. Stop going okay. Okay, now for the, you know, page four, the recommendation for reforming pre trial release programs. Okay, so as we discuss, discussed and discovered, that this is really something that needs to be done on, uh, on a state level. That the city council can't do this. So uh, you will see that if this is revised uh, in the third paragraph, uh, this, to read, understanding that any reforms of pretrial release programs need to be enacted by the Iowa State Legislature. Therefore, the Davenport Civil Rights Commission calls upon the City Council to join us in recommending to the Iowa State Legislature that and then a recommendation. A total of revision is that. Report from the city council to join us in submitting this recommendation to the legislature. I move that we accept that. Second. Any discussion? If not, those in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay, now we go to recommendation for the, decriminal the decriminalization of low level offenses. And I want to thank uh, Michael for uh, uh, helping with some switch here because we had two concerns. One, this has to go to the state. This has, this has to go, this has to go to the state and uh, uh, for you know, changing the law, but also that uh, uh, we at the same time said we want to make a statement about, you know, including the statement of changing a policy for the most for the national police in terms of how they treat low level uh, offenses. So there are two sections that are revised. What, what is revised, what is added, okay? Uh, the middle of the page here is the revision. Considering the evidence that people of color tend to receive more punitive treatment than do whites for the commission of low level offenses, and that uh, such unequal treatment is a major contributor to the problem of mass incarceration and recognizing that it is up to the Iowa State Legislature to make changes in the law <coughs> regarding low level offenses, the Davenport City Civil Rights Commission calls upon the City Council to join us in recommending to the Iowa State Legislature that. So you might want to just vote on each of the two, the two sections separately, okay? So, and let's change the word then to then. Yeah, well, I have to, yeah. 
no, I noticed that, and I will correct. I will correct that. Back. There is a where 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 is a V? There's an extra V in there where it says and that V and that it says and that V such the unequal treatment. The V should be out altogether. Is there another place that you're talking about in the league? No, just the first line where it says the end do fight for the what? Consider me the evidence, the first line, consider me the evidence that people of color tend to receive more punishment than, 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 you're right, you have that, I have that, that, and thank you very much. Okay, I will make those two corrections. Anything else on that first section? I just corrected the, the second spelling of offenses. I was... The, it was spelled with a B, so I just changed it to that level three. Okay. Where, where was that? In the second to last line. Second, you're right. Otherwise, offenses get off the fence. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Anything, anything else? We're going to take a simple move and second and then discuss further and have the vote. Is there a motion to approve this uh, decriminalization recommendation? So just, just, uh, just, uh, just this section. We start just this, this section. So move. There a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, those in favor, please uh, signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? The motion carries. And now the next part, Richard. Oh, uh, okay. okay. And this is the part that we're adding that's specific to the, to the, I've got for police department. And then, uh, Considering the disparity between the treatment of people of color as opposed to whites by police officers when it comes to nonviolent misdemeanor offenses, the Davenport Civil Rights Commission recommends the that yeah, should be that should say that the Davenport Police Department should add that there. Uh, alters its procedures requiring it's how police officers to issue citations rather than initiate arrests for nonviolent misdemeanor offenses. This, this policy change would declare that arresting people with full use amounts of marijuana are not to be a priority of the Davenport Police Department. This policy change would also restrict the ability to investigate, apprehend, and arrest subjects of misdemeanor offenses. I thank you. I thank uh, Mr. for helping with that uh, with that language. So any yeah, any dis discussion on this? Well, I would like to. I I, I, I read that, and I'm uh, I'd re I'd like to hear someone other than ourselves, someone who actually deals with this, uh, say something, uh, make make their own observation. In other words, uh, I don't feel like I understand. Uh, all of the implications of this. I would rather, I, I, I would, I would like to hear someone in the uh, police who's a uh, on the beat police person talk about uh, this particular provision and how it works. I, I don't know how it works, and so th there may be more, and there may be more to this. Needs to be I, and so 
I'm uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm hesitant to uh, uh, restrict their ability unless I feel that uh, the police uh, are also in agreement uh, that this is a workable policy. Let me let, let me just answer that, and uh, so that I can talk from the position of a person of color and having talked with various individuals and looking at various data pertaining to this, Richard. And the police will always tell you that any time you want to change anything, that it is not something that is feasible or advantageous for them to uh, to change. But let me just tell you, when you have the magnitude of black people being put in jail in the state of Iowa versus the number of white people uh, that are not, and the usage is the same uh, with respect for use of marijuana, that bothers me. And, then this, uh, and I'll also share with you that this is just not in marijuana usage, marijuana usage. It happens in every aspect of the criminal justice system. We as black people are always get the long end of the stick when it comes to sentencing. When you look at uh, even other drugs and other things, black people are given a more harsher sentence than white people. So, uh, you know, we're either going to try to change the dynamics of this deal, begin to change it. And, and I, I'll be right frank with you, Richard. I can tell you what the police say, simply because the data shows that, you know, whereas the number of white people that use uh, marijuana is the same, but more black people go to jail because the police stop them and the first thing they say, they smell it. Or they go in the house and they smell it. Well, you know, when I look at uh, uh, things that have happened, when you look at the data, it shows also that, uh, you know, we are oftentimes uh, uh, utilized in a way, or, or, or we are charged in a way with, uh, at a much higher rate on every crime there is. Now, I don't understand how you could have uh, uh, four, five, six percent of the population in Iowa being black and the rest of it being white and, and you know, Latinos and, and, and such and Asian. And, you know, the number of white people uh, dealing with this particular issue. Uh, you, you don't have hardly none that uh, charged with, uh, with, with marijuana low, low, low use of defense. So that, that's the problem that I have. Uh, Richard, and so, you know, the police are not going, are not going to ever agree uh, to things of this nature and stuff. So, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I just got to very friendly and respectfully disagree with uh, with the police to make a decision about something that uh, is sending so many uh, young uh, black, uh, 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 so many young black uh, African Americans to jail. The statistics are that, as Michael referred to them, that blacks are eight times more likely to get arrested. As it says here in the document, uh, eight times more likely to get arrested for marijuana possession than whites. So statistically, marijuana usage is about equal between whites and blacks that there is this discrimination. So what do we have to address nation they go in with the issue of contextual stuff, which is basic, and we heard about these things when we had a public meeting. People made comments and a lot about these things. The whole crime of driving law and using contextual stops to uh to design but, but this is 
calling for is that you know, the post obviously has the discretion as to what they do when they find someone with a perverse amount of marijuana.
from the other documents, you know, I know the ruling court talks about the amendment, and, uh, and, and uh, at least in the, in the Iowa City documentation, they they say that, you know, that, that their review board was established by, you know, according to, the, to that amendment. So anyway, here is uh, uh, it, the, the, the uh, revisions. Now, uh, you might remember that uh, the original recommendation was to establish two different bodies. One was uh, a police, uh, citizens police review board, uh, uh, what word, uh, citizens police policy community, practice, policing practices and review committee. Uh, okay. The other was the review board. Okay. So, uh, you yeah, know, there are two. There, yeah, there are two sections here. Uh, I mean, maybe I could do both, and then we can decide if we want to separate them out. You know, the first one is so you know, talking about both of these, and you should know that the the second one, the community policing practices and review committee, has been in a form basically informally established by the police department already. But this would give it more structure and a little bit more clout. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, therefore, yeah, yeah. therefore, the Edwards Civil Rights Commission recommends that one, the city council and police department create a citizens police review board as permitted under Iowa's home rule authority, modeled after the existing review boards in Iowa City and Dubuque, and the review board in the process of being established in Cedar Rapids. And then the, the, the purpose is the same as it was. The original document. Then the second one is that the city council and the police department also establish a community policing practices and review committee as recommended by the Des Moines City Council to the Des Moines City Council by the Iowa Nebraska State and the OECD area conference of branches. And then, yeah. So what one is what is policy? The second one is policy. The first one is is uh is is uh quite confused. So those are the two recommendations there. Permission. I so move that uh, these uh, recommendations be accepted and be submitted to the city council for action. I second. Any further discussion? And to clarify, this is for both recommendations. Is that correct, Mike? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Any further discussion? If not, those in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. The motion has carried. Aye. <laughs> The last one is the recommendation concerning modeling an unbiased police ordinance after the unbiased policing ordinance of the Moines era. Okay, and the only change I made here was I, you know, before I just gave the ordinance, but then I, here I put in an introductory paragraph that uh, to uh, to clarify it. The Davenport Civil Rights Commission recommends that the Davenport City Council enact an unbiased policing ordinance similar to the one enacted by the Des Moines City Council below. And so do we further recommend that where other of our recommendations on policing reform are also covered in the Des Moines ordinance, they either in our, our recommendations separately or incorporate them to the unbiased policing ordinance. But that one way or the other, they these rep, uh, these replicated issues be addressed because I wasn't going to re rewrite the the Des Moines ordinance uh, uh, in order to understand as their ordinance, but I wanted to yeah, you know, but there were points where our recommendations are a little bit different or sometimes somewhat significant. But it, uh, it's a good audience for addressing the whole issue of all these. Uh, 
that someone want to move? That we accept the revision? I so move. Thank you. Any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Any, any opposed? The motion carries. Um, Commissioner Carp, I'm noticing a difference in the numbers on the pages. I, I printed my copy out when, when, when it came. I'm noticing this difference in numbers and numbering of the pages and uh, yeah, I, my, my document has uh, yeah, 13 pages yeah, at the, uh, the end of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the more than 13 pages altogether. And then we, after that was the appendix that, uh, that, uh, It could be a different program. I'm using pages instead of Word. And I think there was a blank page in your yeah, there was, which maybe yeah, looks yeah, there was a blank page when you were scrolling through it. So maybe that was taken out and that would have thrown it off. Yeah. Or made it different anyway. Well it was not in mine, it was in the one on the screen that there was a blank page. I also yeah. There, you see, there's the blank page. Yeah. Oh, there are two actually. There's a blank. Is that a blank page over here? Oh, so it's one in the beginning. The blank page is. See here. Oh, there. Oh, 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 oh it's going. Scroll through it slowly. Take it from the top of the trees and just scroll, scroll through it slowly because some of these pages are taking time to fill in. You can go a little bit than that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that you know I couldn't get the two out of out of the out of the table of contents, so I just left it in there. They have the recommendations on page one. Okay, yeah. I think here's the here's the other difference. Uh where when you had page page six here, I had that all on one page. Yeah. Page page five is what you had is page five and six. I had it just page five. Something yeah. See this section here? I I think it's the font and it transfers over to this different program. It probably threw off the formatting a little. Yeah, it just yeah, and that's what happens when you when, when you open it up in a different program. When you, that happens when you open up in a different version of Word. Happens, you know. Uh, so um, yeah. So anyway, this is yeah. This this is by the way what I would like also to do, and I don't think we need to. Yeah, have a formal vote on on the and the appendix. The three documents that I sent to you, along with the survived version, of, about the uh, about the Iowa City, the Dubuque, and the Cedar Rapids uh, review review boards. Put that in the appendix. Yeah. I would, 
maybe it's for lucky, maybe one of the things that was proactively read. And, uh, it, you know, it's a lot of documentation. I think that's important because there was this whole question about, oh, yeah, you can't now, you know, they not a, you know, citizen review board, they're not permitted to take five questions. But obviously they are. Say this. Anybody have a problem with that? So that's that story. Thank you for your patience, folks. And I'm sorry it took me so long to get it. Well, it's thank you very much, Richard, for uh, I'll keep calling you Richard. I'm sorry, I don't know why. Grandma's car. Oh, let's do it that way. Thank you very much for all the work you did on this, and thank you, Michael and the priest as well, for your work on it. it it's a truly a heroic effort, and we know it's been a very uh, difficult time for you. So we we really appreciate all the work you did, especially under tough circumstances, Red Light Car. Um, so, so our next step will be to get this to the council. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will. I will add those documents to the budget. I will make the radical changes that we made here, and uh, I will. I guess with the tree, so I just send it to you, and you forward it to the city council, or what? How's that work? Yeah, I can send it out. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I will put it in its final form. Thank you. I'll pick up the underlying. Okay. Um, before public comment and adjournment, I just wanted to, um, and I should have said this, I apologize, during your report, Latrice, but uh, on the budget meeting uh, with the council, I did uh, talk to everybody, and I think December, Thursday, December 3rd and 10th works for everyone. The 3rd uh, is the best date especially for Michael, so, um, but the 3rd and the 10th of work, so uh, it has gone back to Tiffany Thorndike, and she was going to relay that to the mayor, and he would pull the council, and they will get back to us to let us know if either of those two dates will work for them. Okay, also, before we get to public comment, uh, I just want to remind everyone that we have the special hearing on the Seager the case, uh, on Wednesday, November 18th, at 3 o'clock. Once again, I will, you know, I, I'm, I'm imploring you and myself, for that matter, to go over the, uh, on, the on the flash drive, the actual hearing uh, with, the, uh, with the law judge. Uh, because all the documents that you know, are, are, are not available to us from uh, from the follow session of the um, of the commission. So with those not being available to us, we need to make that we need to listen to that, that hearing and listen to the decision examine the decision of the law judge and make a determination for ourselves whether it's not, you know to explain why that you know, you know why the, the award was set up as it was by the you know why or why we support the setting up of the award as it was or change it back to the decision of the law judge so in order to do that we have to uh, endure the hearing okay absolutely can i say one thing please sure uh, and uh, I, I just want each of uh, the commissions to know that, uh, you know, oftentimes we have uh, some, some, some areas where we, where we have disagreements. And, and I, I want you to know, uh, I have enormous respect for each one of you guys and, and, and the fact that we disagree on certain issues doesn't bother me. The fact that we do get business done uh is of the importance but the sensitive items and things that we discussed uh, whether it's race related
information and uh, it's a gender racism of uh, what's happening in this country and, and, and Nick and I were, uh, it, 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 it's, it's not always good and not always easy to talk about and so but uh, just recognize that that, that that we are in the position to change the course of some things and when we can do that we ought to do that and we ought to recognize the wrong and make that right. So I'm enormously uh, 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 happy to be serving with all of you guys. So that's, that's my comment. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And, and we do appreciate how, how difficult it is to talk about these issues. And I think we take, you know, uh, very seriously the, the role that we have in, in trying to make positive changes. And I think we're all grateful to be serving on this commission and trying to make those changes. And, and that brings me to say, um, this is the last meeting of uh, Commissioner Lee Gaston. And Lee, uh, we all thank you very, very much for your commitment to the cause of civil rights in our community. This hasn't been an easy two years for you, we know. It's been frustrating. Um, we know that your good work will um, continue as it, as it has continued in other organizations. And we wish you the best of luck as you um, do good work in our community uh, beyond this commission. So thank you, Lee, very much for all your work. Well, thank you, Janelle. Uh, well, it was frustrating that three quarters of my term was tied up in an unnecessary struggle about our membership. Uh, nonetheless, it's been rewarding to get to know those of you who served with me, and uh, I hope uh, that acquaintance and friendship can grow as uh, time goes by. My interest in and commitment to the cause of advancing civil rights, particularly in these troubled times, is not diminished. I think, though, it will be useful for a fresh space in the commission, and I can apply my concern for those matters in other ways in the community. So I hope to see you around at various events. Uh, as soon as we can start meeting again. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, um, I'll look forward to those contacts as we go forward. Appreciate it. I definitely thank you for Lee as well. Thank, thank you. I wanted to tell you that uh, how much I admire you when, uh, when you were first put on the commission. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, under the Good deal of denigration. If they wouldn't sit, seat you at the table, but they could sit off to the side as if you were not you know, a commissioner or at least not sitting in a, a disputed seat of a commissioner was was truly uh, was truly insulting. Yet you did not let that get to you. You went to all those meetings and you. Uh, and you took it on the chin, it sucks the work of the mission, but more important than uh, the ego that uh, they were trying to attack. Well, thank you, Vinny. I think my uh, my experience of trying to date in high school was probably good preparation for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can identify with that as well, Lee. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Lee. With that, I think we are on to public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address us? Are you seeing anybody, Latrice? No. Okay. Um, our next meeting, our next regular meeting looks like it will be December 8th, and hopefully we will be able to meet with the council on the 3rd or the 10th. Um, for the next meeting, again, since we don't have bylaws or rules that speak to this, um, we, we probably should have election of officers at our December meeting. I mean, we should have a new Hopefully we'll have a new member of the commission by then. Uh, so we'll have a new person. And so I think it, it would be um, a logical time to have election of officers again. So please be thinking about your willingness to serve. 
I think leadership should be passed around. And, and yes, that's done every December. And, um, and, uh, well, once again, this is something that it, you know, our the ordinance doesn't say we're in any bylaws, and um, uh, that's something that I think should be uh, spelled out. But uh, yes, good. Then we will um, we'll have election of officers. Anything else for the agenda for the uh, next meeting that anybody cares to mention? Uh, is there going to be a follow-up meeting on the um, recommendations? Uh, what do you need a follow-up meeting with the city council? Yes. Because I think they asked about it at the last meeting and it wasn't clear and members of the public have asked about have asked the staff about it multiple times. And yeah. I don't have an answer for them. If the city council would like to meet with us to discuss, yeah, yeah, in a working meeting to discuss uh, the uh, the Indian provided recommendations and where do we go from here, you know, before it goes, actually goes before the city council for a vote. I'd be in favor of that. Uh, otherwise, I think that yeah, if the city council doesn't make these recommendations and just you know, put it on their agenda and vote on them one at a time, then I, I, I'd like to see as any of our mission members in attendance at those meetings, or what, you know, either in person or virtually, as possible to um, particularly to speak in favor of the recommendation. Okay, so the expectation is that council is going to put this on the agenda and then they're going to have a, a public meeting and vote on it. Well, I, I, you know, my expectation is one of two things is going to happen. Either the council is going to put it on the agenda, it's all the council can, you know. The council's not going to have access to have uh, another meeting with them to discuss them before they go on the agenda, or the council's going to put them on the agenda. I think the council could also choose not to put them on the agenda, at which point I think we ought to go to the city council and, and speak out against the fact that they refuse to put them on the agenda. Okay, so Janelle, are you requesting that they place this on the agenda or? Well, I, I, I guess I think it's up to the commission, and it's, it's certainly up to Rabbi Carr. I mean, I, I think our expectation after the working meeting was that they would consider these in one way or another. So, um, I, I think it would be, I think it would be fine if we would ask that they put it on the agenda, and if they would like to meet with us again beforehand, that we'd be happy to do that. Does that sound okay, Rabbi Carr? That works for me. I mean, yeah, we got to move it forward. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because when these things get on the agenda, there's still work to be done. So, for example, if we do get them to agree to a, a citizen police review board, then we have, we've got we've got to work with them to to structure what that review board will look like. What will be its duties? What will be its authorities? What will yeah? You know, what will be its structure? So, so I guess it's actually, it's somewhat, I mean, we, you know, when we give it to them, then kind of the ball is in there. We can tell them, we'll meet with you if you want to meet with us again, or you can put it on the agenda, uh, but let's move it forward. But yeah, well, well, yeah. We will be. We should be happy to accede to whatever request they have. Other than we're not going to touch these issues with them at all. That's their response, and that's not going to happen. And we're not. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to speak out. So, are you sufficiently guided, Latrice? No. Well, um. I guess when you forward it along, I mean, I think you can say that, that as Rabbi Clark said, the, the commission um, is providing these final recommendations to the council for their consideration. 
Um, we're asking that they put it on an upcoming meeting agenda. Uh, if prior to that they would like to meet with us for another working meeting, we are happy to do that. Does that sound okay? The trees. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? I will make this comment before we go. No wonder it's getting ready to storm outside. Uh, and the reason why is because we don't have any public comment. So. <laughs> That's right. If we are done, I would have a motion to adjourn. I so move. Thank you. Second. All those in favor. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. You stay safe. Have a great day. Stay safe. You too. Stay safe. Okay. Goodbye.